Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. So today, it's another unenveloping. I've received this package from China. What we're going to do is we're going to unbox it. We'll take a look at the pen inside. I'll show you the ink that I'm going to use and then do a writing sample. So join me down on the mat and let's take our first look at this pen. So here we are down on the mat. I've already cut open the end. Let's pull it out of this envelope and see what we've got in here. So pulling it out, we've got a nice plain white wrapper. So I'm just gonna quickly turn that around. Here it, we've got some Chinese symbols and we've got a nice little logo. So let's take the box out of here. Now already I'd like the presentation on this. This to me looks like it could be black, but with the patterning on it, it makes it look quite a dark blue. It's got this nice decorative border there in like a silver thread. Then again, we've got them same Chinese symbols. And I'm guessing they say Wing Sun, I don't know, but that's my guess. And then let's just turn it over. That stitching goes all the way around. Okay, let's open up the box and see what we've got. Here we go. So looking inside, the first thing we've got is this little leaflet. And here we've got Wing Sun Super Quality because it is a Wing Sun pen. It's shown us there the filling mechanism because this is a piston converter. Inside, the first thing we've got here, and I like this, this is a nice little touch. This is some silicon grease. So when I need to disassemble it for a thorough clean, I've got the silicon grease that I can use. I think that's a brilliant idea. Then inside that again, we've got the pen. I'll just lift that pen out and that's everything that's in there. It's got a nice little pocket there that it can go into. Again, it's these little details which I think can make all the difference. Let's get rid of the box. Let's take a closer look at the pen. So what I've got here is a Wingsung 698. This is in, well, when I saw the picture, it looked more of a bluey color. Here, it's more of a bluey gray, which is fine. It's a nice color. It's different, isn't it? Certainly different than a lot of pens that I already have. This is the model 698. What's different between this and the other 698 I've got, this one's got a gold nib. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. So let's explore the body. So at the top, we've got this gold colored finial. There we go, that's really nice. It's got a little bit of engraving on the top. There's a taper down and then it goes straight and down into the clip. Clip, not overly springy, bit tough there to pull up. Again, that's not a problem for me. Who goes around doing this with the pens? I certainly don't. What I do do is I put it over a hook or my shirt pocket and there's enough given there to do that. Looking at the cap, the cap is the same width all the way down. We come to this gold colored ring and here we've got wing S. And then again, I'm assuming these two Chinese characters are for Wing Sung, I might be wrong. Then 698, which is the model number. Staying with the cap, got another little bit of plastic and then there's a fairly noticeable step down to the body. The body to me has a very slight taper, really is hard to see. But it's tapering down till we get to another gold ring. Here we go. And the plastic end finial. And there you can see, I'm assuming it's like some kind of injection molding mark. All in all, not too bad. This is a piston filler. So if I twist on this end here. Now I had this self same problem with my other one. Let me just pop it back together again. And let's try again. There we go. Twist that up, that fetches a plunger down, and then back down, and the plunger is going up. I'll need to watch that because the last thing I want to be doing is the end coming off when I've got ink in it. That, even though it's down, feels quite loose to me. Again, I'll have to check. It could be that I just need to, because I pulled it off, I need to really maybe reseat it. We'll take the cap off. So, uh, make sure it's fully closed. So the cap comes off in half, one, literally just over one turn. Really nice. 
and that reveals a nice little ink window so we can see the level of ink in the pen. It's not the biggest ink window I've seen, but it's enough that I should be able to see if there's ink in there or not. So let's take the cap off all the way. There we've got the feed, and I'm just going to turn it over, and that reveals this gorgeous nib. Now to me, it's a smallish nib. I paid 70 Aussie dollars for the pen, so I wasn't expecting the biggest nib in the world. Now what's different between this pen and my other 698, this is a gold nib. So let's take a closer look at the nib. It's got some really nice engraving. It comes down and we've got, it looks like the word lucky and then some more engraving. Really like the look of this. Now you will be able to see on the screen now a closer view of this nib. I can't get that close, so I'm just looking with my eyes. So the details on the nib may be different than I've just described them. From the nib, we come into the section. The section is the same color plastic as the rest of the pen. So again, it looks quite nice. At the bottom, there's a little lip. If I put my fingers on it, it's not uncomfortable, it's quite nice. And the pen then fits quite nicely in my hand. I'm just gonna see if it posts while I've got it this way. No, that seems really loose, so it doesn't post. But as I say, I had that problem which we saw when I was taking it apart with this. So it could be, once I get that sorted, it might post better. Oh, no, there we are. It seems to go down, but then it will click up very easily. I'll need to keep an eye on that. Again, it's one of the issues you get. You know, I've paid, as I said, 70 Australian dollars for this. I'm not expecting the same build quality as my $250 Pilot Custom Heritage 92, but it's still worrying that that's happening because $70 is not inexpensive. Let's pop the cap back on. All in all, at the moment, it looks quite nice. I'm going to step away from the desk now and I'm going to give the pen a clean out. Then when I come back, we'll look at the ink, we'll fill it up, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. So I've cleaned the pen out, then it dawned on me, I haven't done my size comparisons. So before we look at the ink, let's just have a quick look at that. So the first pen I'm going to fetch in is a Pilot Metropolitan. This was one of the first pens I bought and it's a really nice workhorse pen. The other pen, is a Lamy Safari. I brought these in because most people either have or have seen and used a Metropolitan or a Safari, so it just gives you an idea for the size. Let's take the caps off, let's look at the nibs. So I think in terms of size, the nib is very comparable with both of these. They're roughly the same size, so I would think it'd be about a number five. Now I'll pop these away and we'll look at the ink. So what ink have I chosen for this pen? For this one, I've gone for Diamine Odenil or Odenil. I'm not really sure how you should pronounce that. I have had somebody tell me that this is around the waters of the Nile. So that means that Neil would be the one, but I spend most of my day working with computers and I'm forever looking and dealing with Nil. So excuse me if I switch between the two as I go through this video. So let's get this out of the way and fetch in the ink. So here we go, Odenil, Odenil. Let's take that off. For safety, I'll fetch in the dragon today, and then that goes inside the dragon. All right, let's fill this pen up. So here we go. I've already got the cap for the open, so it's all the way down to the bottom. In goes the pen. So I'm twisting all the way down. I'm gonna go back up, which will expel what I've just put in there. And back down again. That's nice and tight. Just going to quickly wipe off that section and nib. There we can see in the ink window. Can't see through it anymore because it's full of ink. We just get this ink out of the way. So now the ink's safely stored away, I'll fetch in the trusty notepad. So this notepad. It's an A5 size, it's black and red, and it uses the optic paper, really nice fountain pen friendly paper. So let's do our writing sample. So what pen have we got? We have got a Wingsung. Six, nine, eight, with a gold fine nib. The ink, 
Diamine, Earl De Nil, or Earl De Nil. Lovely colour. Let's do our drying times. Immediate. Nice and wet. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, still got a little bit of wetness there. So something that I need to bear in mind if I'm going to be using this for long note taking sessions, I maybe need to think about drying times or using some blotting paper. For the next writing sample, I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen write. Not the quietest pen I've got, but also it's not one of the loudest. There's some nice feedback coming through. My last bit of testing, I'm going to see if there's any line variation. So I can definitely see some line variation coming through there. The nib feels very soft to use. So here's my current Wingsun 698. This has got a steel nib. And if I do that same test there, I'm not seeing anywhere near the line variation. There is a little bit there, but not as much as I'm getting on that gold nib. The gold nib does feel soft, it is nice. When I first started writing with it up here where I did the wing sun, it felt really weird because I'm used to my Chinese pens having that stiff nib and this didn't, it seemed to be springing as I was writing. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Overall, the writing experience was quite nice. I'm seeing little bits of character coming out and I think as I use it more, like we look here on the T where I had that bit more pressure. So we've got that down line, which has got a bit more width. Same here with the B, with the downline. I think that's going to look really nice, but I do think it's going to take me some time to get used to it. But overall, not too bad. As I say, that's the gold nib. This one here is a steel nib. So I will do a video sometime in the future where I compare these against each other. I need a few weeks of using them both really in parallel so that I can get my thoughts together. So that's a video that I'm looking forward to making because I can then see that the differences between gold and steel plus everything else would be virtually the same. The other pens that I'm going to make a video with this, I'm going to compare it against the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 and also the Platinum 3776 Century. Why I'm going to do that video, all three of these are gold nibs. So it'll be interesting to compare the gold nibs between these two, which are from Japanese manufacturers and have very, very different nibs. They're both mediums, but the Platinum is extremely hard and gives a very, very fine line. The Pilot, a bit of a softer nib, gives a really nice juicy line when I'm writing with it. And then we'll compare that, as I say, with the Wingsung 698 with that gold nib. So what are my first impressions of this pen? Let's just clear them all off. We don't want to see anything but the pen now, do we? I'm concerned about the build quality, especially when I looked here. You know, that shouldn't have happened, but I need to look at it. It could be Gary being very heavy handed. It does happen, but it's something I do need to look at. I need to look a bit more at the nib. As I say, I bought it because it said it had a gold nib. I'm going to sound as if I'm being a bit down here, but I don't have any way to prove or disprove it. So I'm taking it that what they've told me that it's a gold nib is correct. It may be, it may not be. I can't prove it either way. I think if it is a gold nib, it's really nice. It was just under a third of the price of that Pilot Custom Heritage 92, which is also a piston filler. So in terms of value, yeah, it looks really good value, but I need to spend more time using it. The first impression I've got of this pen, it's nice. To me, the plastic makes it look a bit cheaper, especially when we compare it against things like Pen BBS. Here's a Pen BBS pen. And here's another Pen BBS. 
both of these have got really nice resins, whereas this just seems to be like a plain plastic. Not a major stopping point, but all three of those were roughly the same price. Differences? Gold nib. I've got to be honest, I'm going to be really picky. If I look at it against my other Wingstone 698 material, I really do prefer that transparent material to this grey. As I say, on the picture it looked more blue, which is why I'd picked this Odeneal. Not disappointed with it, just not what I was expecting. So that's it for the Wingstone 698 with the gold nib and diamine Odeneal. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got a Wingstone 698? Is it the steel nib or the gold nib? Why not drop a comment below? What are your thoughts on them? When I do my comparison videos between the two 698 models and then also with the other gold nibs that I've got, what would you like to know? What would you like me to see that I look at and investigate just that little bit more deeper? Please hit the thumbs up button, give the video a like. Every time you like, every time you comment, well, it just helps the YouTube algorithm to surface the content to other people. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.